you know Frank Luntz, right? The, sure. The Polster. Yeah. Uh, Frank Luntz, if you know, he's a, he's a very like conservative, very well respected uh, pollster, okay. and uh, he invited USC students, just students, uh, not just from USC, I think from other campuses as well, but majority from USC to his house, and I thought it was just gonna be a dinner. And one of my actually uh, coworkers, Gabe, you remember Gabe? Oh, sure, yeah, there. yeah. And he he was like, "I'm going to this dinner thing. You want to come?" And I was like, "Sure." I, I go there. <laughs> Turns out to be it, it. It's a it's it was a taping for a Dr. Phil show. It was a Dr. Phil podcast that was supposed to examine political polarization. And I, I was fasting that day, so I have not eaten any food or water. And they're recording, so I can't do anything. So I'm, like, fasting, like, basically yeah. really hungry. And they're talking about politics and how crazy <laughs> it is. So, like, I'm losing my mind. But I, the moral of the story is Dr. Phil basically examined the Democrats and the Republicans on campus. And he was trying to understand why is there polarization? Why are students on college campuses divided? And he made us do some exercises to be less divided. So we, we did this thing Dr. called Phil? Dr. Phil, like literally Dr. Phil, yeah. the Dr. Phil is there with Frank Luntz. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know any of this was going to happen. So I'm just there. And I'm politically independent. Like they asked yeah. to, us to separate. So I was sat on the extreme like corner because I was independent. But he made everybody in the room stand up look each other in the eye and not say a single word for two minutes. This was part one. So he called it the standing triad or dyad. He had like a term for it. So they just looked at each other, not saying a single word. And just, that was the first step. The second step was person A taps the person B on the shoulder and says, I trust you. I don't trust you. I don't care. Or I don't know the answer to this question. And then the person B does the same thing. Yeah. And most of the people, said, I trust you. Most of the people said, I trust you. Second exercise was now he started saying more and more words in Dr. Phil's voice. He was like, now let's, you know, like see the other person as a human. And then yeah. the third step was now imagine this person waking up this morning and he realizes his father passed away. Is this person lonely? Is this person experiencing depression? Yeah. Is this person having financial difficulty? And then I heard a lot more, I trust you than the previous because you got to talk yeah my point is and i was I actually listened to the the video recording before this podcast to see just to refresh my memory and i and i most of the kids just felt it, you could see it they they were happier before it was very tense because they were like pinpointing oh it's this guy's fault it's that guy's yeah. fault but after the simple exercise of looking the other person in the eyes they just felt more at ease. Like that was what broke the ice. Not Frank Luntz asking those small talk questions or Dr. Phil. It was just a simple exercise of looking the other person in the eyes. And they're like, it's okay. This guy's human. He doesn't hate you. Yeah. He doesn't want to go after your family. Like I, would, I just think that was profound. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I mean, think about it. And, and I think every family, right? You have people that have opposing uh, political views and you, and you still view them as a human. Maybe you're like, I don't, I don't like you. I don't like the way you think, but... You still care for them because you know what's going on in their lives. But if you humanize people like that, yeah, it's it's, it's huge. But a lot of families don't talk about politics no. at, the, at the dinner table. A lot of them don't. Like, they, they don't, at least in some of my, like, not immediate family, yeah. but, like, distant family, we just, we'd rather not talk about oh, politics. Oh, with distant it, family. Yeah, like, distant family. We'd rather not talk about politics. I think that's a more traditional view. Yeah. What do you think of this? Because I, I think it's a good thing to talk about politics at the dinner table. Like, you know, it's not, it's not to be a bad thing, If is you want to get good at anything, you you got to practice it and you got to do yeah. it again and again and again. So if you want to be good at talking with your family about things that matter, what's going on in the world, current events, global politics, who you support for, for this or that candidate, what do you think about gun control? What is, what's going on with global climate change? If you want to get good at any of that, you got to practice. And most of us have been taught never talk about religion mm. and politics. And guess what? Two things we're terrible at talking about: religion, religion and politics, mm. right? So, yeah, it's it, it depends on your goals. And for me, I would always much rather talk to people about whatever because I want that connection. I want that that feeling of looking in the person's eye and like yeah. I trust you. You know, I, I want to be able to talk about anything with anybody, right? And and take away all of the artifice and all of the animosity and take all of that away. And let's just connect. You know, there's things that you are so passionate about. And that you're so passionate about, and I don't know anything about. Right. And I would love to learn that from you. Like, yeah. what do you really care? Oh, that's so yeah. interesting, and it's yeah. an opportunity to learn and be curious. And 
everybody has that. You know, we can all learn from each other in those ways. But sometimes you just add this filter. And it's like putting on these goggles that make the other person look like this horrible, uh, terrible person. Yeah. You're like, no, that is that is not reality. It is a distortion of our, our common humanity. But that distortion is so powerful because it is reinforced every day in so much of our lives that it is hard to wipe all that crud away from uh, from our vision yeah uh, so this, uh, to your point like we know the unifiers are shrinking and we can do what we can to come together as people like those yeah. french folks in the park uh, but the other thing we got to be mindful of is what's trying to divide us and why and what can we do about that that side of the equation that's a great question <laughs> That's a great question. I think people are right now, at least in, in the podcast world, I think it's a question that's becoming more and more prevalent and bigger people are talking about this and people start realizing, hey, maybe there's an agenda, maybe something's happening. Um, but to what we can do, I think, is I think your point on curiosity, people, they're just not as curious, I feel like you. I talk to people and, you know, I'm talking about traveling or whatever, and they're just like, like no interest and it's like why aren't you interested like you don't want to see the world like you, you don't want to go to that new restaurant you don't want to you know talk to that person you've never talked to like just like your point right naturally we want to talk to people but it feels they want to talk to people that they're comfortable with or do things that they're comfortable with right instead of jumping out of that comfort zone um i, t I told you this one before but everything that's worth living for is on the other side of fear right and so yes. in a way it's like they're fearing that new situation or that that new confrontation that can come about, you know, meeting someone new or traveling somewhere different or you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's a great quote from Joseph Campbell. It said the treasure you seek is in the cave uh, you fear to enter. Um, and so if you can build up the courage to challenge yourself to do the things yeah. that you're afraid of, that's where you'll gain the greatest rewards yeah. in, in, in life. 